In this video, I'll show you how to easily drag and drop a 2D UI object in Unity. And this will be using Unity's iDrag Handler interface, which is already built in, and all we have to do is extend it and use it. So as you can see, I'm dragging and dropping this nice icon around, which by the way, thanks to the wonderful sponsor of this video, Unity, you can get for 50% off in Unity's Black Friday sale, starting November 14th, 2021, and ending December 4th, 2021. This and hundreds of other awesome assets will be on sale for a limited time. There will be a ton of 50% off deals and lightning deals, where assets are highly discounted up to 90% off at a first come first serve basis. So the faster you buy it, the more chance of a discount you have. Make sure to press buy now on the items to secure the discounts. Alrighty, so let's implement this drag and drop. So this works for both the old and new input system. If you want to use the new one, make sure to have it installed. So go to Window Package Manager. Up here, go to Unity Registry. Then we can scroll down until we find Input System. Then click Install. And then click Yes to restart the editor so the changes are applied. Alright, so now we can exit out of that. And what we want to do is add in a UI along with an event system. So we can right click UI and then we can just add an image. And we can name this draggable object or whatever you'd like. And so if you double click it to focus on it, we can select here a source image under the image component, click the circle, and you can use any image you want, or you can use one of the default ones just to test. All right, so we can just move this to the center, which by the way, you can do so here by clicking this anchor preset, pressing Alt, and then clicking the location where you want it to move to. In this case, I want it to be in the center. And if you want to pivot it, also click Shift and Alt at the same time. All right, and if you're using the new input system, just make sure to go to Event System and click Replace with Input System UI Module. And now you can use it with the new input system. All right, so I'm just going to make a folder here for scripts. And let's make our script. So right click Create a Script. And we can just call it Drag and Drop. Press Enter or double click. And then we have this script here. So basically what we want to do is implement Unity's iDrag handler. So what this is, is an interface that Unity has created. And an interface just basically gives you kind of the recipe and you're the one who needs to actually implement the methods. So if we extend, for example, this iDrag handler, which will be called whenever we start dragging on our object, then we need to declare this function on drag with these parameters. And then we can do whatever we want inside of this function. In this case, we're going to drag our object with our mouse. And so the event system will basically check if any of these interfaces are defined. And if they are, they'll call the respective functions that are declared within your class. And right here to the left, you can see that there's a bunch of other ones you can implement, such as I begin drag. So this is called when we begin dragging and I end drag, which is called when we end dragging. And there's I pointer click, I pointer down and etc. So let's erase these two using statements that we don't need. And we have to make sure to do using Unity Engine dot event systems, which will allow us to use the interfaces. So right here after mono behavior, we can put comma and then put the interface that we want to implement. So in this case, we want to implement I drag handler. And you can see that there's a red arrow because we haven't implemented the function yet. So cool little tip in Visual Studio Code, if you press on where the red line is in this case, and you press control period or control dot, you can click implement interface and it'll put the function for you. So you don't have to write it out. All right, so we can just erase this. And now we want to drag around our UI object, which if we click our object, for example, you'll see that it has a rect transform and this is what we'll need to move around. But we want to make sure that we move it with respect to our actual screen so that it matches correctly with where we want it to move. And Unity has a nice function that we can use for this, which will turn our mouse position, which is in screen coordinates, which is a coordinate system that just represents the dimensions of the screen, usually 1920 by 1080. And what this function will do is that we'll turn a screen space point to a position in world space that is on the plane of a given rect transform. So this is what we want to use in order to accurately move our UI object within our canvas. So first we need a reference to our rect transform. So we can do private rect transform and we can just call this dragging object. Then we can declare an awake function and just do dragging object equals transform. So the transform of this game object as a rect transform. So we're casting it in order to be of a rect transform type. So this is just to get the rect transform component of our game object. So once we have that, we can use this function that I showed previously. So if rect transform utility dot screen point to world point in rectangle, and basically what we want to do here is pass in 
our rect transform, the screen point, the camera, and it'll output our world point that we want our object to move to. So we can pass in the dragging object here, which you can rename to dragging object rect transform just to make our lives a little easier. So I'm just going to change the name there if you'd like. Then we need to pass in the screen coordinates, which we can get from the event data here, the pointer event data. So you can do event data dot position. Then we need to pass in the camera, which we can also get from the event data. So event data dot press event camera. And then we need to output our variable. So we can do out var and we can just call it global mouse position. All right, so this will output a variable that we can use within this scope. So now we can just move our rect transform to that location. So you can do dragging object rect transform dot position equals. And if you'd like, you can set the position directly to global mouse position. Or if you want to kind of smooth the movement so that it feels nicer, has an acceleration and deceleration, you can use something called vector three dot smooth damp. And for this, we have to pass in the current position which is dragging object direct transform dot position, our target position, which is the global mouse position. So we're going from our current to the global mouse position. Then we need to pass in a reference velocity. So let's just say ref velocity. And up here, let's just declare a private vector three velocity equals vector three dot zero. So this just outputs the velocity of the current damp that is taking place. And finally, we need to pass in a damping speed, which we can just declare up here. So I'm just going to do a serialized field and we can do private float damping speed. And this is usually from zero to one. And I found that point zero five F is a nice value. So the closer it is to zero, the faster it goes. And then down here in the on drag function, let's just put in our damping speed. Alrighty. So if we go back to our editor, in our draggable object, we need to add our new component. So add component, drag and drop. So you have to add this script on the component that you want to drag and drop. So if we press play, we can now press our game object and drag it around. Pretty simple, right? A couple things I want to show is that you can also do the I begin drag handler or the I end drag handler. So you can implement these if you want something to happen when you begin dragging and when you end dragging. So once again, you can click it, press control dot and implement interface. And you can do the same for this one, control dot implement interface. And you'll see that now you have these two functions, which you can use. And so last thing I want to mention is that in the previous video, I showed how to do this with 2d and 3d colliders in a separate way. But if you're interested in adapting it to use this I drag handler, you can just adapt this script to move the object directly if it's not a rect transform. For example, setting the game object transform position directly. And since you'd be getting screen coordinates, you'd have to convert it into world coordinates, which I go over in the previous video, but I thought it'd be useful to mention. And you'd also need on your main camera, a physics raycaster for 3D colliders or a physics 2D raycaster for 2D colliders. So if you want it to work with 2D or 3D colliders that are not UI objects, Make sure to have these Raycaster objects on your main camera, depending if you're using 2D or 3D colliders, and just adapt the script to your needs. And you can reference my previous video if you have any doubts, or ask on our Discord. And also remember to remove any functions that you are not currently using to avoid them being called. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. And thanks once again to the sponsor of this video, Unity. And be sure to check out their Black Friday sale. Links are in the description. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And as always, I'd like to thank my patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. These kinds of videos would not be possible without it. And with that, I'd like to thank my new patrons. In the supporter tier we have, thank you so much for your support. In the enthusiastic tier we have, Dejan, Jimmy, Lane, J Rams, Tao, and Janko. Thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. And if you're interested, the link is in the description. I have for source code, early access, exclusive tutorials, and exclusive Discord chat. And if you're not already on our Discord chat, make sure to join. You can post memes, chat, or ask questions. So thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you next time.